Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Please all stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all His creatures. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, on this first Saturday of the month, let us implore the intercession of our Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Mercy, so that we may approach worthily the throne of mercy, the God who is full of compassion for us. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy. And grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who grant us by glorious healing remedies while still on earth to be partakers of the things of heaven, guide us, we pray, through this present life and bring us to that light in which you dwell. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated.
A reading from the book of the prophet Micah. Shepherd your people with your staff, the flock of your inheritance that dwells apart in a woodland in the midst of Carmel. Let them feed in Bashan and Gilead as in the days of old, as in the days when you came from the land of Egypt, show us wonderful signs. Who is there like you, the God who removes guilt and pardons sin for the remnant of his inheritance? Who does not persist in anger forever, but delights rather in clemency? and will again have compassion on us, treading underfoot our guilt. You will cast into the depths of the sea all our sins. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and grace to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from days of old. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. He will not ch always chide, nor does He keep His wrath forever. Not according to our sins does He deal with us, nor does He requite us according to our crimes. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is His kindness toward those who fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus. But the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So to them, Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that, you, that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. 
So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he, he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, How many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat? But here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. <clears throat> While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly, bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field, and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fatted calf because he has him back, safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you. And at once did I disobey your orders, yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always and everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, the traditional title given to the story of Jesus that we heard in our gospel today is the parable of the prodigal son. And the word prodigal means wasteful lavish, excessive, and even irresponsible. The younger son in the story of Jesus is truly prodigal because he wasted the inheritance that he got from his father. He did not use his inheritance well. And so eventually, he lost 
all his inheritance. He wasted everything that he got from his father. But he did not only waste the inheritance by leaving their home, by leaving his father, he also wasted the love and the care of his father. Sinayang niya ang mana, pero mas lalo niyang sinayang ang pagmamahal ng ama. But it is not only the younger son who is prodigal in the story of Jesus. Even the elder son is prodigal because the elder son, by refusing to enter their home when his brother, younger brother returns, also wasted the opportunity to be reconciled with his younger brother. Ayaw nang pumasok sa kanilang tahanan, kaya nasayang yung pagkakataon na makapagkasundo siyang muli sa kanyang kapatid. And he, the elder son, also wasted the opportunity to share the joy of the father. For that is the invitation to him of his father. Just come in. Just come home and share in the joy of welcoming back your brother. And by refusing to come in, he wasted that opportunity. My dear brothers and sisters, the parable of Jesus today reminds us that we are all prodigal sons and daughters. Let us admit it, my dear brothers and sisters, we have wasted so many gifts from God. We have squandered many blessings that God gives us. Instead of using our time in doing good, in working for reconciliation, for unity and peace, instead of using our time in doing what is good for other people, we instead do bad things, we hurt each other, we do each other wrong, and we violate the commandments of God. Sinasayang natin yung maraming biyaya, yung maraming pagkakataon, yung maraming oportunidad na binibigay ng Diyos sa atin araw-araw. My dear brothers and sisters, today let us ask ourselves, Am I wasteful? Mapag-aksaya ba ako? Do I waste God's blessings, God's graces, the opportunities and chances that God gives me? Sinasayang ko ba yung mga biyayang ipinagkakalob sa akin ng Diyos? Sinasayang ko ba ang mga pagkakataon na ibinibigay ng Diyos sa akin? Napakaraming biyaya ng Diyos sa atin. Malalaking bagay at kahit mga simpleng bagay. At marami dito nasasayang dahil hindi natin ginagamit ng mabuti. Yung simpleng kuryente, tubig, baka sinasayang natin. Are we wasteful? of the gifts of the earth? Are we wasteful of the blessings that God gives us? And am I also wasting my life? Baka yung sarili kong buhay nasasayang. My dear brothers and sisters, thank God, like the Father in our parable today, our God is also prodigal because He is prodigal in mercy. 
he lavishes us with his love, with his compassion, with his mercy. And this is what the prophet Micah tells us in our first reading today. He is a God who removes guilt and pardons sins. He is a God who does not persist in his anger forever, but he delights in clemency and in mercy. My dear brothers and sisters, let us stop wasting the gifts of God. Let us instead be prodigal. Let us instead be lavish and excessive in doing good works, in being compassionate to one another, in being generous, in forgiveness, and in love. Please stand. The story of the prodigal son expresses in a simple but deep way the reality of conversion, that is, the working of love and the presence of mercy in the human world. It moves us to hastily come to the Father in prayer. And so for every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Not guided by the Pope and the bishops, our priests may constantly welcome those who repent and seek reconciliation with God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That like the prodigal father, we may be generous in showing forgiveness to those who have hurt or disappointed us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That family members who are alienated from one another may choose forgiveness and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That sinners may be moved to repentance and seek pardon in the sacrament of penance. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the dead may reach their eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. We continue to pray for Pope Francis as he makes his apostolic journey in Iraq, that God may keep him safe and make his mission successful. We also pray for our personal intentions and for the intentions offered in this Mass. Almighty God, welcome the prayers of sinners returning in devoted love to your unchanging mercy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Through these sacred gifts we pray, O Lord, may your redemption yield its fruits, restraining us from unruly desires and leading us onward to the gifts of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all you do in this world through your, our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more by your Spirit, you move human hearts that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power, it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out your majesty on earth, and without end, we acclaim Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. 
Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son. And in this saving banquet, to graciously endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Broderick our Administrator and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us ask the Father to forgive our sins and to bring us to forgive those who sin against us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof, roof but, but only say the, the word, word and, and my, my soul shall be healed. healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Please stand.
let us pray. May your divine sacrament, O Lord, which we have received, fill the inner depths of our heart, and by its working mightily within us, make us partakers of its grace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the ears of your mercy be open, O Lord, to the prayers of those who call upon you, and that you may grant what they desire. Have them ask what is pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Are you?